Hey YouTube. So uh, I've been working on a uh, lead drive key slug load and um, I've had a bunch of like fitment issues with different holes and I've just been trying to figure out the best way to uh, to get these things loaded up. And I think I've hit on I think what I'm going to roll with like for for I guess the foreseeable future. Um, 40, uh, Fortune Cookie 45 LC turned me on to these uh, downrange dark blue wads, and uh, I bought a you know bought a couple bags and gave them a shot. Um, the issues I'm having with these, they fit really well, and I think maybe with a lighter charge, these would work really well. Um, I'm having a couple issues with these. So when you load these things up, the uh, the pedals or the well, first of all the um, the slug, it fits like pretty low. <laughs> if I can get in there with one hand here. <laughs> okay. There we go. You can see the slug fits like really low in there. Even with a, a nitro card under it, it, it only comes up a little bit, right? Maybe, you know, like yay high or something. So um, I was having inconsistent openings of my fold crimps. These pedals are getting peeled back, and I'd find some wads where the uh, the pedal had just been like ripped right off. And the pedal is the only thing that holds this thing in the rifling. Basically, if there's no pedals, then you just have a you know a slug clinking down a, a rifled barrel. There's no you know no accuracy there. So you have to have pedals on there. The other issue I was having this is an example of one that I found. They're not all like this, but this leads to inconsistent uh, accuracy is you notice on the bottom here how that's been like broken I don't think that's from loading that's from firing I think what happens is you can see how this area here has been kinda of like crushed off to one side so I think what happened is when this thing fired it fired with enough force that it crushed this base like that right and then this kinda of tweaked in the barrel this bottom part and then the pressure blew the side out now the slug is still going down there straight-ish, right? But your your all the pressure is kind of like you know gone. That's you know gone around the base. And when this thing releases, you know it comes out, it's going to have a tendency to you know go all squirrely. You know you don't know what's going to happen. The velocity is probably going to be way down, and you know I was just having terrible accuracy with it. So I had bought a, a bag of these uh, these short wads. Uh, ballistic product sells them. They're, let's see. Where's the bag? Here. Right here. Um, ballistics products, short shell, 12 gauge wad. That's the info right there. So I had tried these and I originally thought I'm not going to use them because when you put the slug in there, it it doesn't fit, right? Look at that. It's too, uh, the, the, um, the base here is too small, or I guess too thick for a drive key slug. So I, you know, said, well, I'm not going to use these. Maybe I'll, I don't know, I'll make some birdshot loads or something out of these. But, you know, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to do with them, but I kind of threw them to the side. Um, well, I, I was thinking the other day about these, and I kind of came back to them, and I hit on something that I think, well, I know now, works really, really well. Um, so I have these 20 gauge fiber wads, um, Ballistics product sells them. They're the circle fly, you know, fiber wads, unwaxed, just regular 20 gauge. Uh, you buy them from Ballistics products, you know, wad 20C. Uh, they're the basic half inch tall um, fiber wad. The other part is a mini nitro card. Um, now this is for a 7 8 ounce Lee slug. You can use a 1 ounce, which this is a 1 ounce. Um, you notice Fortune Cookies talked about this before, the height difference, right? So there's, you know, a big height difference with the uh, the 1 ounce. The reason I switched to uh, 7 8 ounce is they're shorter, so they fit better, right? Um, but you could use this, the one ounce, you would just take maybe instead of a half inch, 
you would use their quarter inch, right? You take off, you, or you could break this in half. See how that breaks like that? So you could use the quarter inch with a one ounce slug or a half inch with a seven eighths ounce slug. And then you buy their mini nitro card or you could get the nitro card and you could figure out the height, you know what I'm saying? This is what works for me. I take one of these shorties and I haven't tested this to see if this is gonna prove accuracy or not, but I pre-break this right here. See that? See how that's broken? I break that um, just because it it's gonna break anyway. So I want both sides to be broken. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but uh, if you put it in there, one side will just break, the other side won't. So I just break them my, you know, both myself. I stick this guy in uh, black side up into the wad, wad into the wad. <laughs> Mini nitrate card goes in there. Seven eight ounce slug goes in the top. Now you can see here, now the slug sits above where this ribbing is. So it fits in there real nice, right? And it'll fit into your, your shell real, real nice. I mean, it, it fits in there perfect. And I think what happens when this fires is this slug compresses down, right? It pushes way down from the, the energy. And these ribs actually engage they, they grab onto the slug. Other people have made comments to me about having issues with the slugs um, spinning. Yeah, so the, the wad is what grabs the rifling, right? And so the, this wad starts spinning, but if there's not enough friction, the slug won't spin, right? It'll, you know, it'll just kind of stay, you know, straight. And the wad will kind of spin when, and the, the slug won't. So I think what happens, based on what I've seen with these, the pedals, is this slug actually compresses way down in there, and it grabs on tight. Uh, you know, and in the process, it breaks off the bottom part here, around the base, uh, which is important, and I'll tell you why. So these are some fired bases that I've recovered. Uh, I just went out today and I shot them. So you notice there's no pedals on there anymore. Well, what happens is the pedals, they're perforated on the bottom, and they just break clean off. Which is great, because this thing goes down the barrel, right? It's going down the barrel. The bottom breaks, but this is all in one piece. And then when it comes out, these pedals, they just fly away, right? And you're left with a slug, you know, the pedals come right off of it. Everything falls apart, and now you got just a slug, you know? Whereas with this design, right, okay, now the slug is down in there, right, okay, this thing comes out and it's spinning and it's going crazy, right, and this, there has to, there's a little bit of time where this thing is slowing down and this thing is continuing on where this can influence the slug, right, you can say, okay, you know, this thing, you know, does a birdie or something and, you know, flings away, you know, and in the meantime, this slug is getting, you know, pushed around a little bit. And, you know, just a little bit right by your, your barrel, you know, is going to translate into inches or maybe even feet downrange, right? So the downrange blue wad, at least for this application and that amount of powder I was using, I was using blue dot, 47 grains of blue dot with a one ounce slug. It's out. Not good. Um, this... I like this. This works really well. I was out today. Um, I was uh, bringing my 870. I had my 870 out there with a cantilever rifled barrel, um, actually a wing, uh, Wingmaster barrel with a Weaver scope, and you know easily within four inches at 100 yards, um, like easily. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's any better than that, but you know if I'm aiming at something, you know a pie plate. It's a dead pie plate, you know. Okay, so let me show you how I load these things up. Um, oh, the other thing. I switch powders. I stopped using Blue Dot. I'm going to start using Herco, uh, and I'll explain why. I was loading up, you know, 47 grains of uh, Blue Dot, which, you know, thumps. Man, it's awesome, right? But uh, I was having some issues with unburned powder. Here, let's come take a look. Let me just grab a couple here. We'll see if there's any powder in these. Okay, so 
Let's see if we can get in there. See the unburned powder in the bottom of these holes? Now these are not magnum primers that are Chedite holes with a Chedite 209 in them. Um, and I was having issues, you know, I, I, the, when I shot these it was snowy out and I could see powder like in the snow, right? So there's all this unburned powder getting shot out of this thing. Um, it's not efficient, right? Look at this. See all the powder right there? That's unburned blue dot. I could put a torch on that and it would fire right up. So that's telling me that this powder is too slow and it requires more pressure to ignite completely than a shotgun with this load can provide, right? Um, so you probably would need more weight, you know, or higher pressures. Anyway, um, that it's not really acceptable because I'm basically just throwing powder out the barrel without burning it, you know. So I did a, uh, I did like you know 75 shells of Herco, and they're clean. They come out great. They fire great. Um, I'm using I well I worked up to 33 and a half grains of Herco um, with a 7 8 ounce slug in this configuration, like that. So that's Herco. Um, so that's that's what I worked up to. That's where I'm at now. Uh, the other thing is this powder is very fine and it has a tendency even in your lee load all uh, so when you load it in here if you you know if you fill this up and you start you know pushing this thing back and forth powder comes out of this end here you can see some powder right there actually you know it, it comes out the side so it doesn't really meter well in here the other thing will happen too is once this gets down in here right this this uh, wad is responsible for holding that powder down against the uh, the primer in the bottom of the cup. Well, it kind of skates around the edge here, and it gets up into this like compression area, and then it's useless. It's not you know it doesn't go towards anything, and that'll lead to issues with um, you know with uh, velo you know velocity differences and accuracy. So you want to keep the powder on the bottom. Now, in cast bullets. I saw somebody had taken some paper, and they made a one inch square. And you know they put it on top like that, and then you take this and you push it down, right? Now I have this little rod I use for black powder, but you know I can you know push that guy down in there and okay, okay. So now see how that paper is right there? Well, that's holding. The whole thing kind of together and then I can put it into here you know like you would normally you'll hear a pop probably <laughs> that one pop, but okay I put a six star clip on it and this is what we end up with Right now, I've had issues in the past with using the DR blue wad or you know W you know Winchester uh, WA or AA twelve knockoff or and it, basically the Federal the Windjammer all of them are about the same height. This the shorty, look at look at how deep that crimp goes. Let me see if I can get a focus for you. There we go. See how deep that crimp goes? I think that's how deep a crimp is supposed to be. It's just, when, you know, in other cases, the crimps, they barely close. Now, when people are making videos and they say, oh, I crimped it, it looks good. Well, that's that day. If you come back, you know, a week later, a month later, a lot of those crimps have probably opened up and you have like this like triangle thing on top. Well, that crimp is not opening up. I mean, that's almost inverted, right? That is not going to open up. Um, I actually put one of these in my pocket last night and I just kind of walked around with it for a while and uh, just to see if the powder would come past that paper and it doesn't. Um, here, let's make one start to finish. So, right now I'm just using my uh, um, my meter here, you know, just off my uh, my progressive, 
And I just, you know, put her go in there, get it up in there, and we'll just do the old flip. Okay. So. I want to test it for weight. We'll see where we're at here. Thirty-four. Thirty-three point nine. Okay. That's right where I want. I want thirty-four. Thirty-four grains of powder. Here, let's do this again. That looks good. Let's put this back. Make one real quick here. Now, I mean obviously I get the uh, I get the whole line going here, and you can make a whole bunch here in not too long amount of time. Get that. Throw one of those on top. Get your 12 gauge slug. Put your piece of paper down. Easy with two hands. <laughs> and tap it down. Load it all. Feed it. Start a six star print. Finish it off. Voila! One slug that performs better than any other combination of, you know, of, uh, you know, I mean, I've tried, I've tried a whole bunch here. You can see, what are these? Those are. Play busters, the down ranges, here's some federals, some uh I don't know what are these, oh, those are federals. So I've tried a whole bunch. They uh they all they, I mean they're okay, but you know, these are these are a lot better. I like these. These are nice. I'm gonna make a lot of these. <laughs> so see that powder right there? See that kind of it's creeping up? Without that paper there, that would just scoot right around that wad, and um, that powder won't move. That's stuck right there. So, um, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, happy shooting. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. So I just finished up loading up 50 uh, Lee dry key slugs. Uh, this is with the uh, the new load here, uh, 34 grains of Herco. 78 ounce slug, the uh, BPI short wad, 20 gauge fiber wad, 20 gauge mini nitro, uh, let's see, and a Chedi 209. Um, so I, in the previous uh, video I shot here, I talked about the overall height and the reason why I use these uh, short these like short wads, these green short wads versus like a uh, a blue DR. Um, so a previous load I had done. Uh, let's see, this is the uh, W uh, WAA 12 SL wad, which is a taller wad. It's taller than the DR wad, but you can see I loaded these up now uh, six months ago. You can see how some of them are like taller now, right? Um, and these are also estate pickups I got at the range. So um, that one looks pretty good, right? That one, that's what it's supposed to look like, right? So over time, what happens is these things come up, the, uh, they open back up, right? So you can see this is open back up. This is a one ounce slug with 47 grains of blue dot. It's the uh, 132 bushing. I do two of them, so. It actually comes out maybe a little bit less, but um, and it just has a 20 gauge nitro card under the the one ounce slug. So this actually may work out. The, if, if I did this with the 78 ounce slug, it probably would work. Um, it wouldn't be as nice as the Herco ones I just did, but uh, this is what happens. That if it's too long, it may look okay when you first do it. Like I can put this back in here, right? And I can make it look good again, right? Okay, wow, perfect, looks great. You know, you wait a couple hours, a couple days, and then that will once again 
look like that. So you can see it's opening up already. You can see it just in that amount of time you can see it's opening. So I'll have to shoot these one at a time or run them through my H&R uh, um, partner, you know, single shot, something like that. Um, they're shootable. They just, uh, they're just not, you know, they're not good. You know, that's not, it's not the way you want to do it. So this last load, it's just, these things just look awesome. They just look so cool. I mean, they look like they're on fire <laughs> uh, just right there. And you can see just how much room that that uh, fold crimp is taking. It takes a lot. It takes like, you know, I don't know, about a quarter inch or so. Here, see if we can get this in focus here. There we go. See how deep that is? That that looks like a factory crimp, and you can see how much room it actually requires under the, the crimp. Oh, so... I didn't really talk about these uh, this paper I put in here. I just said I kind of put paper in there. Uh, I mean, you could use whatever newspaper. Uh, we just happen to have this yellow tissue paper up in the closet for uh, wrapping gifts. And I went on Amazon and I got a one-inch uh, EK hole punch. And I just fold up this paper, you know, the tissue paper. I don't know. 11 times or however many the maximum I can get in here. I slide it in and, you know, you know cut it. That's how I make these. I mean, you could use scissors if you wanted to be, I don't know, if you wanted to, like, torture yourself or something, but, uh, <laughs> um, get a square punch. If you're having issues with, uh, the powder getting past your, uh, your wad, that's what you want to do. And, hey, I mean, well, if you're doing it with a clear hole, you know, make it look awesome, you know. <laughs> like that looks really cool. You know, I could hand this to a friend and be like, yeah, I made this, you know, like how awesome that looks. So, yeah, that one I kind of boogered. <laughs> I mess them up sometimes, I'm not perfect. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, for the most part. I mess a few of these up. Oh, that's a good one. You could probably go a little bigger, inch and a quarter maybe. I don't know if they make an inch and a quarter, but um, anyway, so I just wanted to kind of show that. There you go.